Well, good afternoon. Thanks for coming by. And I uh, wanted to take a few minutes to talk about uh, microsemis, gallon nitride transistors, and modules that we're going to introduce this year. So here's the agenda. First, we'll talk about briefly touch the uh, GAN technology advantages. Many of you through this uh, symposium probably learned and heard a lot about, about these. Uh, then we talk about microsemi GAN, specifically for power transistors, what we offer this year comparing to previous years. And many products that we're introducing, so we're going to pick uh, five feature products we're going to talk about specifically for this year. And then we also have an amplifier group that produce gamma nitride amplifiers. We'll also talk about that, and we'll do a quick summary. First, the, get, the get gallium nitride advantages, as many of you know that the wideband gamma material, which is a silicon carbide, and GAN, because the physical property offers much bigger advantage than the traditional silicon-based bipolar or LDMOS. For example, the band gap, wide band gap allows the device to operate at a much higher temperature. The uh, critical field, that is 10 times bigger than the silicon, so the power density is much higher. We can operate at great operating voltage, like 60 volts, 65, because the breakdown voltage is 200 volts which is much better than uh, silicon devices. And then the lastly, not the thermal conductivity is three times better than silicon, which is especially important for high power devices. You want to get the heat dissipated through the ground very quickly. Now, of course, the GAN thermal conductivity is about the same as silicon. So it's important that GAN has to be built on silicon carbide base substrates so that you get the, the thermal benefit as well. So, the micro semi devices right now we all offer again on silicon carbide uh, uh, substrates. If you look at this technology uh, material versus power versus frequency, uh, silicon and gas are mainstream devices that we use to build transistors. Vacuum tube can produce very high power up there. Uh, many systems use vacuum tube, but they have a reliability problem. After seven years, you probably want to uh, change that. So many people want to go into solid state uh, transmitters and, and to replace the vacuum tube. The problem with silicon and gas, the power is far away from uh, reaching the vacuum tube can reach. So you have to combine a lot of them. That's why we start investing uh, silicon carbide and gallium nitride in the past several years. And both material, we call a wide band gap material, can produce much higher power in much smaller size with good efficiency and good reliability as well. So Microsemi has silicon carbide devices focused on VHF, UHF, about 2,000 watts at single transistor devices. Now we're focusing on GAN to, for higher frequency uh, releases. Last year, we introduced several uh, GAN products, primarily focused on S-Fan. So I want to talk about that a little bit. For example, the standard air traffic control 2729 band, if you use a bipolar devices, you want to achieve a 14 dB GAN, 300 watts module you have to use three uh, bipolar transistors because a single power transistor bipolar at this frequency range can only achieve 170 watts. To get 300 watts, combine two of them. And a driver stage is needed because bipolar only gives you about 7 dB of gain. So to achieve 14 dB, you need a cascade in our stage. However, with gain, a single transistor can achieve that 14 dB gain, 300 watts at this frequency band. So in this particular case, a single GAN can replace three bipolar transistors. Now you put it in physical uh, size. Same requirement, you need a driver stage, you need the output, we call a pallet, combine two with a 50 ohm uh, termination with input and output matching to achieve that. Now with GAN, a single small size transistor can achieve that GAN and power level. So you already see the advantage of GAN power in this case. Higher power, higher gain, better efficiency, smaller size, and easy for the system to design to a smaller system. Uh, so that was last year. We introduced about 300 watts gain transistor for this frequency band. We'll talk about what we released this year uh, later on. But this year, we're actually going to release quite a bit of product. We take that as a, uh, as a base. We expand our product portfolio into other market segments, for example, into avionics, mode S, for broadband data link, for communications, and the radar air traffic control. We have more power, higher power devices we're going to talk about. So let me go through this quickly. First one, uh, MDS 1400, 
this actually is not a GAN device. It's still a bipolar. Although bipolar is mature technology, but still there's room for improvement. In the traditional bipolar world, in this, in this, in this uh, application, only about 1,100 watts, 1,200 watts. We're introducing a 1,400 watts. For 1030 megahertz, uh, efficiency is greater than 50%. These are the typical market segmental application for avionics. You can see in the top three, TCAS, MOS, and transponder. Roughly, uh, bipolar can achieve about 1,100 watts, 1,200 watt devices. And some customers say that's still not enough, a little marginal. So we're introducing a 1,400 watts bipolar devices that can be used in any of these three applications. This is the curve comparison between the old devices and new. The old devices you know, reach 1,100 watts, but as you drive harder, it saturates right there. But the new devices in the same package size, uh, we redesigned the in inside. And if you drive harder, it can reach, continue to pump out more power up to 1,400 watts. Single devices, not a push pull. 52 volts and give you 50% uh, efficiency. This is the actual measurement with 170 watts input drive, which is the yellow curve, that you will, it will reach 1,400 watts at the 1030, uh, 14, 1030 megahertz with 32 microsecond, 2% post format. The second part I want to talk about is now the GAN devices. Um, this is the, we want to use GAN in L-band avionics, but in uh, more heavy-duty post format. So we target at MOS ELM, not a standard MOS, but MOS ELM. So if you look, look at this comparison, with MOS ELM, this is 32 microsecond on, 18 microsecond off, 48 of the small pulses. We call it burst, and then repeats that every 24 milliseconds. In the bipolar world, the best it can do uh, is 525 watts. And uh, so we call it MDS500L, about 10 dB of gain, with 57% of efficiency. However, with gain, one single device, same, uh, same frequency, can reach 700 watts with 20 dB of gain, and more importantly, achieve 72% of efficiency. Extremely efficient. Uh, you look at the input drive, originally you want 60 watts to drive this to get 500 watts out. Now with this device, with 5 watt in, you can get 700 watts out with better efficiency. So that shows you the advantage of GAN devices compared to the traditional bipolar. So this is the typical data that we tested for these devices with 5 watt in, we got 730 watts out, a excellent return loss, great efficiency, uh, very high gain, 20 dB of gain. Another advantage for again is we can match for broader band uh, better than uh, what a traditional bipolar LDMOS can. So we challenge on the uh, uh, broadband avionics, which is 960 megahertz to 1250 megahertz. Uh, 128 microsecond, 10 percent. In this case, we have two devices released. One is 250 watts, one is 500 watts. That can achieve 17, 17 dB of gain. That can use all these applications for the broadband avionics or data link. We also have a, a broadband communication market that we can target our GAN devices on. So the first device we try is for one to two gigahertz, uh, octave band, 60 watts CW. So a single device reach about 60 watt devices, broadband 13, 12 to 13 dB of GAN and 40% higher efficiency, CW mode. Back to our air traffic control radar market segment. Last year we mentioned we introduced uh, 300 watts devices that can replace three bipolar transistor. This year we continue to keep going. We're going to have 400 watts and 500 watts single ended devices. So the first is the 400 watts, a single transistor for S-band that can reach 400 watts with a 12 dB of gain and greater than 50% of efficiency. These are the actual data measurement. But that's not it. Let's see if we can do more. So we're also introducing a 500 watts single-ended devices. Similar uh, test data, 27 to 29, a 500 watts, 12 dB gain, 50% efficiency. This is up to now, we know the highest power that can be achieved with the single devices, with gain technology. Again, gain is much higher than the bipolar um, and very reliable. Now with these single devices that can achieve such a high power, but many system houses still, still say that's, that's not enough because their system requirements sometimes 20,000 watts 
30,000 watts, 40,000 watts. Can we do even more? Yes, we can. How about we do a 1,000 watts uh, pallet? So a pallet comes as pretty straightforward. We combine two transistors, put an input and output matching together. So it's 50 ohm in, 50 ohm out. You can drop in and plug and play. Very easy to use. We introduced the L-band bipolar concept uh, in this pallet about five years ago. Up to today, it's still highest L-band uh, pallet, highest power and L-band pallet available on the market. So we're using the same concept applied to the S-band. Now, there are other vendors that try to do uh, 1,000 watts S-band, which they do build amplifiers, uh, combining eight gain transistors reach about 1,000 watts. What we try to do is using two of our 500 watts transistors into this pallet that can put out 1,000 watts output power, still maintain 12 dB of gain, but size is much smaller. It's three inch by three inch by quarter inch. Now that also including some uh, biasing circuit, smart biasing circuit to uh, alle alleviate your, your need for negative biasing. If you take out those control circuit, the RF portion is only three inch by two inches. Now, put things in perspective, what's three inch by two inches? is about the size of a business car. That's three inch by two inches. So for S-band, 1,000 watts, we can build into this small size that you can hold the power, 1,000 watts S-band power in your hands. That's the amazing features of this GAN technology you can do. So we look at the evolution of the S-band power. We started at a silicon bipolar transistor. Over 30 years, we can achieve about 170 watts single transistors. Then we introduced a pallet with sil silicon bipolar, 300 watts, great. Last year we said, let's do it again. 300 watts, devices we released last year can replace the output power plus the driver stage. One single device again, replace that. This year we said, let's do more, 400 watts and 500 watts. Additionally, we put out a 1,000 watts about your business car size of S-Band this year as well. So you can see the evolution of S-Ban uh, power development with GAN technology injected in the market. We certainly can offer something that is a breakthrough. In summary, the GAN revolution has officially begun. Many customers, many system houses are embracing GAN technology, even though it's still new. But many people see the advantages and the future of this GAN technology can bring to us. Now, besides the power transistors, uh, MicroSemi also has a division that produces uh, amplifiers. So we also have several uh, GAN amplifiers that we can talk about. This is the vertical uh, pass that MicroSemi offer. We offer transistors, paired transistor pallet. We do multi-transistor modules and also high power amplifiers. These are the GAN amplifiers uh, we offer uh, into the market right now. So incorporate the latest the GAN technology in the output stages that compared to traditionally GAN and RS9, and focusing on multi-octave bandwidth, the broadband uh, market segments, up to 18 gigahertz uh, frequency band. Very high efficiency, high power, high power density, as all the features and advantages that I mentioned earlier for uh, using the GAN. So these are the standard products that we offer for the amplifiers, from 0.5 to 6, 2 to 6, all the way 6 to 18, as well as 2 to 18. And power range from 10 watts to uh, 80 watts as the highest. These are all broadband devices. And uh, for those of you concerned about ITAR, this has coded what the uh, ITAR uh, restrictions are for different kinds of amplifiers. These GAN amplifiers also has a special feature that if you want, you can ask for a, a TTL control circuit building that you can turn off the, the, the power uh, DC supply during the off post if you're not using the CW mode, which has very fast uh, turn on time and turn off time for this feature. This is the one of the typical uh, amplifier curve that we, we can show you as from two to 18 gigahertz, about 10 watt devices, pretty flat. So that's all the GAN devices we offer, both from transistor level and amplifier levels. I'll take a couple questions if anybody has some questions. <laughs>